excited because you're looking at me through my camera. I revived it. It's back in action. I got up super early today. It's still a bit dark out right now. Uh, I got up at 4 a.m. I was just kind of a little bit too charged to tackle the day, make sure my camera was working, and um, plan a bunch of things. So today's gonna be something different. I'm gonna take a break from the greenhouse today because I've got the poly up, so I know I don't really have any below freezing temperatures, at least for the next 10 days, looking at the forecast. So we're gonna do some field work today. We're going to be balancing a bunch of things. I gotta go and pick up some more fall rye seed because I'm gonna do some cover cropping. So we'll touch base on that once it, once the, the sun comes up a bit more, show you what happened with the fall rye and peas that I planted. Maybe that was 10 days, two weeks ago, something like that. They're slow to germinate, but that's okay because there's no rush on them. But we are going to go to our main urban site and I'm going to reshape the beds with the rotary plow and I'm gonna till it up, gonna sprinkle a bunch of cover crop seeds and uh, I'll leave it at that for now. I do have more in the plans, but I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. So we're going to be doing that while balancing harvesting and with orders. So Mark's going to handle that stuff, and I'm going to make today's video more focused on the whole idea of cover cropping and what we can expect to do with that today and then throughout the winter and next spring, what we're going to do with those cover crops and how they're going to help our soil. All right, let's get into it. Well, that fall rye looks good. The peas are also germinating in there, so that's even better. So I'm going to replicate this same thing over at our other main urban site because that soil needs some work. It was built as rubble when we started it, put in probably a total of six inches of compost over the last two years, but you know we've probably spent a lot of that organic matter and nutrients from the intensive growing we've been doing there. So I'm going to start building it back today. You'll see how that plays out. All right, we're here. Mark's just pulling on the bike as well. He's gonna do some harvesting real quick before I start turning those beds. Just take a little checkup on our greenhouse here. Looking pretty good. Some nice action. I think these are probably seven, 10 days away from a harvest, which will be fantastic. I mean, look at how uh, how awesome it is to have landscape fabric. Look at all these weeds coming in the walkways. Those aren't gonna be an issue for us. And our beds of lettuce are completely weed free. That's fantastic. Let's check the other one where we've got some spinach coming as well. Good. Perfect germination. Good enough at least. Not too much weed pressure. We flamed these before direct seeding them. Now, you know, a lot of people ask in the comments, you know, which beds do you fl flame and which ones don't you? We're not so worried about flame weeding beds that we're going to put landscape fabric on for transplants, but beds that are direct seeded on, we want to flame weed because we want to keep them weed free. Before I start doing any soil work here, I'm going to pull off all my fabrics in the walkways. Mark's going to harvest this arugula and spinach, which is just kind of a spot harvest. There's not really a ton there. And then I'm going to rotary plow all of my walkways back into the beds because over the years, the walkways get a little bit bigger when we're doing no till. We're doing this the shallow till with our tilter. That always kind of kicks dirt to the side a little bit. And so the walkways eventually come up and the beds go down. So I want to reverse that, get the beds mounted up again. And um, I usually wouldn't roto till after this much rain, but this soil here is really sandy. So I'm thinking that it's going to be okay. At least I hope. So Mark's just doing a hand harvest there. Sometimes hand harvesting is more effective, especially with spinach, because uh, you, get, you get the whole leaf instead of just part of the leaf. This is my favorite hand tool. It's just a Leatherman, but I like it because it just has a clip on it, opposed to the Leatherman that have the um, that have uh, the case. I find the case is a hassle. This is just Mark and I both have these. It's just handy to keep on you. So when you got to do things like pull out landscape pins out of the ground, you got the tool on you. All right, so here we go. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roto-till the beds first, basically just because the tiller is already on the machine, might as well till the beds first. Put in all that organic residue, fluff them up nice, and then I'm gonna take the rotary plow, install that, and then hill my walkways into the beds. You'll see how it all plays out. The basic idea here with this plot is We've gotten three seasons out of this, two really good seasons, really productive seasons. This year, I'd say was down probably 30%, possibly even more. And I attribute that to just lack of fertility, lack of organic matter, plus some weedy compost that I got, which compromised quite a few beds, even these beds of spinach were a bit compromised by the chickweed. So I'm gonna put in all these cover crops. Today I'm gonna be planting a mix of fall rye and peas. I'm just gonna sprinkle it into the beds and then I'm gonna let that grow all winter and even into the late winter, early spring. And then if it's long enough, you know, if it's a foot, two feet off the ground by late February, early March, I will bring a flail mower in here, which is a different implement for the BCS, which basically knocks down those cover crops and then mulches them on the ground. I will, I might, I don't know what I'm gonna do exactly yet, either tarp them right there or till them and then tarp them. But either way, this plot is going to sit dormant until early May next year, most likely, depending on how early I can get in here and break down those cover crops. So here we go. I think I'm going to till it again just to level the beds out a bit more. All right, now I'm just gonna mix my pea and rye seed together, just loosely, no exact measurement. And I'm gonna sprinkle it onto the beds, rake it in, and then we're done. So the idea here is that the pea is the nitrogen fixer and the rye is the organic matter builder. All right, so that's done. I used four times the recommended amount of rye and I figured because we're an intensive farm, let's try intensive cover crops. So that was $25 worth of rye 25 kilos, it's cheap. Used about maybe $10 worth of pea seeds. Again, $35 for all this, it's nothing. So we'll see how that goes in the spring. Might check back in a couple weeks, see how it's germinating, but that's it for the day, guys. See you tomorrow.